dude. 108 pounds. Good boy. You make your mommy proud. And this is mine? Yeah, this is so That's my wall. Oh, that's really fast. Or I just need to get out more. You should go away more often. You guys like me. Hey. Happy Saturday, everyone. Just noticing I have a big dent in my door. Ew. Oh, you little monkey got out again. So I'm just gonna reattach my drops into my feeders after I catch this lamb. Dude. At least he knows what the water bowl is. that laker be going? The soup? It looks like it's going out empty because it's not low. Oh. This is what we do on our holidays. Hello everyone, it is Monday. I have been away for a couple days. Mark and I went to the lake and had just a chill couple days hanging out by the water. It's funny as you get older, I don't know what it is, but we only need a couple days to just recharge. And this morning we looked at each other over breakfast and I'm like, what do you want to do today? He goes, I think we need to go home. I'm like, I think you're, I think you're right. Tomorrow and Wednesday, I'm actually off the farm. So I would like to take today and go across the road and do our weaning weights of those lambs we weaned on Thursday. So they'll be a lot quieter today. They were actually quiet Friday, but I thought I would come in here and just see my animals because I miss them. I do miss them when I'm away. Hi. How are you doing in your pen? Are you a queen? So if you're looking like some udders are coming. And this is why I love Carissa. Especially when I'm still on holiday mode. Look at what she did. She already set up. Which is quite literally half this job. So I guess the plan will be, oh she even bedded it all up for them. What we're gonna do is the first, basically first half of this pen, we're gonna throw on, not throw, but we're gonna 
divert them onto this side. Uh, there's just too many over there. And that will be the perfect amount between the two. All right, I got my helper. I got some lambs loaded. Mr. Marge, let's see how you're weighing up. It's okay. Yep, up you go. Holy. You gain one pound a day, 82 and a half pounds for June 21st. Good boy. You make your mommy proud. Yeah, bye. <laughs> Spoiled rotten, single child. 108 pounds. What are we now? August, May, June, July, August. It's three months Mah. old. So you're big. Bye. Mah. Bye. Mah. Bye. You're a sock. Oh hi. Mah. Bye. Mah. Mah. Is that a single? Yeah, that was a single. Okay. You too. Come on. Nope. There you go. There you go. Much better. I will say this. It is a steamer today. It's so hot. It's been hot the last three days. Uh, all right, let's see how this group did, shall we? Haven't done this in a while. Okay, average weight, uh, 58.95 pounds. So 59 pounds, which is crazy. The heaviest lamb is 108 pounds. That'll be, that'll be a breakout baby. Uh, we had, we had a few of those. Uh, minimum weight was 21 and a half, which is terrible. 52% of this group were males and 48% were females. The heaviest um, weighed lambs were the Ritos, but again, the, that was the breakout baby pen where all Ritos sired. So all in all, they did fairly, it was fairly uniform, except for this Suffolk, and I don't know what happened there. They just might have been the younger lambs. All right. Good morning. It is, I don't, I have no idea what day it is. I've been away from home for two days and I have not picked up my camera and I have not picked up my phone. It's been actually kind of nice, but today I am really excited to bring you guys along. We are heading to Lindsay where I'm getting my wool made and they have it all washed up and we're just going to do some brainstorming as to what we think you guys want on the website so I'm I'm excited I've never done anything like this I'm not crafty I don't know anything about wool so I'm hoping uh, we can get some inspiration yesterday however I wish I was able to take some footage for you guys I got together with a group of um, kind of progressive sheep farmers we get to, we try to get together twice a year but because of COVID we haven't been together in forever we got to go to a really cool place they just got into milking sheep a couple years ago so very neat place wonderful family and uh, it was just nice to see some people again especially peers I'm gonna try to meander my way east to Lindsay. I'll see you in a bit. Okay, we have just arrived. They do quite a, they have quite a market here. Those turkeys? I don't know what those are. Anyway, that was all tulips when I was here in the spring. It looks like there may be pumpkins now. And there's the barn. And there's their little wool mill right in there. And the store's up behind us. <laughs> Soak. 
And this is mine? Yeah, this is soap. So we soak the okay. fiber. This is 183 degree water. So I'm not touching it. <laughs> and we soak it three times. Okay. Which sounds excessive. Uh, just the heat takes out lanolin, right? Okay. So I'm gonna lift this up. So this water is pretty clean. So I'm gonna say this is the third soap. Okay. Um, so that's the first one that would look pretty stingy. The, the first one is almost black. Right. The second one is in between, and then this is sort of the color we're looking for okay. after the third. And the third is something we kind of discovered with yours. I was like, maybe we do a third soap, right. and it worked out really well. Right. So then we just sort of leave this sitting in the really hot water until the washer's ready. Okay. And then about a half an hour before the washer's finished, and this is the we'll washer. Take this out. Yep. Cool. And let it drain all the water out of it. Okay. So that it's nice and light when we go to move it. And then we just rotate this over to the washer. But yeah, cool. so three soaks, and two then, washes and a rinse, and then you head over here. All right. And then this is the dryer rack? Yeah, so this is the drying rack. So this is what I was saying before it gets, we kind of spread it out on here. Yeah. And just let natural, it just dry naturally, which is super helpful in this humid weather. That's obviously been taken out this morning. This is all oh my. This was taken out yesterday, so it was pretty dry. Wow. And then we'll come through and kind of break up the clumps to help it dry further. And then there's not a ton of vegetative matter left either. Like it looks pretty good when it comes out. Cool. So what's after this? Okay, after so the dryer? we let it dry until it's completely dry, and then okay. we put it through the picker. This is the. You said this is a picker. Yeah. So clean picker. So I'll, we'll start here, and then I'll move you okay. where you can see into the room. Sure. So this is dry and it's all clumped up. Yeah. So like it's all stuck together. Yeah. Sort of feed it onto the belt. But basically there's like a tiny set of wheels yeah. that have teeth on them, metal teeth. And then there's a really big one with metal teeth. Cool. So it just, and it's not doing anything like harmful to it. It's just kind of breaking up the clumps. Yeah. So you'll see it here, and then when we go look in the room, okay. it's poofy. Oh wow, you have a little observation deck here. That's my wall. That it looks like down. When you're done, you want to lie down and take a nap. At yeah, I bet while I'm getting sleepy. <laughs> so cool. Once it's all, once we get through the whole basket, because we've taken all the natural oils out of it, we would then condition it. Okay. So you're adding a little bit of, uh, it's like conditioning your hair. Okay. It's like you take all the natural oils out of your hair. Maybe I'm not, that's not a good analogy, I don't know. But and then you're adding a little bit back in just okay. so that it doesn't have static. Oh, I see. Um, not super big problem in the summer. Right. So it gets very little conditioner in the summer. And then the dead of winter, it obviously gets more. Gotcha. Because it's super static. Right. It looks like that here. Yeah. And then so the grates at the bottom, anything like debris wise will fall, we'll fall again. Grates. It's like every step has the ability, it's like a combine. Every step yeah. has the ability to exactly like sip more. Yeah, so then like right. less and less of what we don't want is getting taken out at right. each station, right? So this is the next step. It normally sits in a bag for right. a few days <laughs> until we get to this. This is a little bit of mine. <laughs> Gotta come up with a lot of things. So then we put it on the, the belt. And this has three sets of wheels that it's being passed through. Um, and again, more short fibers like second cuts or just shorter pieces will fall through to the bottom. And the fiber we want will continue on through at the yeah. basket of the end. What was this called again? It's fiber separating. Fiber separating. Yeah. It's so really fluffy. fluffy. And a lot of the vegetative matter, like there's still some, but. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. I still can't believe that's my It's so nice. It feels very soft. Oh. Too. So when we come to the carter, uh, between the blue uh, stripes, yeah. it's considered a belt. Okay. So we always know, depending on this, the recipe we're running. Well, what we end up going to end up doing is that it's run at a certain certain many grams per belt, right. and then a certain RPM. Gotcha. So it's like a dual thing, and that's all part of the recipes. 
of what goes into the yarn okay. or the roving or whatever you're making. Yeah. And then so we would always be watching to make sure the RPM stays at a consistent. Yeah. And we would this be consistent so that you're getting a nice and consistent roving Product. coming every night. So this makes roving? Roving or bats? Oh, yeah. Bats. Okay. So then you sort of want to evenly distribute it in within the belt. And you don't want to stick your hand in there. No. There's a, I don't know how many rollers there are in this one, but a lot. There's two that kind of help feed it into the intake. Yeah. And then there's kind of one big one down here, and then it goes up into the drum. Okay. And, and there's three sets of wheels, and yeah. the teeth are going in opposite directions. And again, everything that these teeth are doing is trying to align the fibers going in the yeah. same direction. So it pulls it off the drum, kind of sets it through a set of combs, goes back on the drum to the next set of combs, yeah. back on the drum to oh, the next set. Attaching it to the guide wire, and then I'm going to hand feed it through. Oh, you just gonna... oh right, because it has So then this open. just makes yeah. this go. Yeah. I'm just going to grab a bit, a drum. <laughs> we matchy, matchy. It's all about the brand from Belfast. Exactly. Yeah, that yeah. Oh, that's really fast. So then this we're going to use in wool. Run about 20 to 25 feet to okay. the counter, um, just to make sure it's the thickness it needs to be um, and as consistent as it needs to be uh, before you'd want to start. I can't believe that's a six stuff. What are we doing up here? So this is if we were putting roving into bumps. This is what it would look like. So then it goes into, I can grab a bunch to show you, but basically puts it in like a nice little coil that's easy and compact. Yeah. That's what that is. And we pre-dye our it's a very pretty color. It's like a periwinkle. Yeah. Well, it's more purple. I'm very like, pretty. Cherie's the color expert. I'm just, yeah. I'm just here. <laughs> but yeah, that's what we're, that's what we're making. This is called a drop right? Yeah. And basically, it's taking two to three sets of fibers, combining it into one, and then we put it through here twice. Oh, so you'll you'll take it from this and put it through again? Yes. So these two will go in together, and those two will go oh, in okay, together. Okay, they've already been through. Yeah. And then it's all about just aligning the fibers to get a really nice uh, uh, yarn. Consistency? Yeah. Once they're... So once it's done here and it's gone through it twice, then we go over to the spinner. This is a spinner. Yes. So that is like that. This is the mohair? This is mohair, yeah. It's got the very nice. Yeah, it's nice. It's very it's nice. consistent and heavy. And then this is us applying it, which is basically taking our two bobbins, putting it together and adding a twist, which is based on the recipe on the spinner. Okay. With the recipe on the uh, wire. We are not done. <laughs> You're never done. I'm very impatient. So then it goes to the cone winder and becomes one big long strand of yarn. Oh. And then we steam it. If it's being dyed, it's this not. This is a steamer? Yeah, it's not on right now. Basically, it's got a kettle, a giant kettle, and you turn it on, and uh, so the pipes create steam, and it just helps to set the twist. So any fiber that's any yarn that's not being dyed yep. should go through the steamer, I got just you. to help set the twist. Okay. So if you're going to leave it natural, you're never going to dye it. Because when you're dying, you're steaming it anyway, right? It gets really hot again, yeah. so it usually you, you can typically skip that step if right. you're dying. Right. And then wow. once it, it's all steamed. It'll go onto the skein winder and we wind it into... Oh, this is making a skein, right? Yeah. <laughs> Look at me, knowing the words. This yeah. would then come off here, we tie it off. Right there. And then it would just get... The fingers are not working. Make your braid. 
Yeah, however you're... And then... Oh my goodness. It's pretty. So pretty. Now these are cool. Fast product blankets, yeah. Crip blankets. This is a beautiful color. She does, uh, yeah, she has some really pretty... This is mostly white and then this is all just different shades of gray in here. This is adorable. She's the, she's the least pleased with that one. Oh really? Yes. I love it. I love how it's she's like maybe not show her that one. <laughs> oh I love it. Is that not like a suit meeting on the two Oh gosh. Oh this one is just Well, I am finally on my road, and what a day. It is sometimes really hard to leave home, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, and, and between a sheep meeting yesterday and just getting a few tidbits of information I can bring back to the farm, and then today with this wool, and, and just brainstorming with Karen and with Ellen about ideas for the website, we came up with some really good ideas. We're hoping to do a launch of some wool products here um, probably mid to late fall uh, and just in time for Christmas. They have a really good artist in there, Cherie. She's been making some wool art ideas that, you know, Billy, Goat, Ruthie, and then we'll try to think of stuff for Christmas and, and try to incorporate different themes. I was so emotional just watching the wool come through some of those machines just because we take it we take it for granted. We have to shear our sheep no matter what for their comfort, but to see the miracle of what it can be is like, I don't know. I think because I know where it came from and I know I know how much work goes into the other end of these animals and, and that it is just literally a byproduct that no one cares about and we're actually making something that will bring someone joy and I don't know. I or I just need to get out more. I'm pretty sure I just have to get out more. Did you miss mommy? Did you miss me? My new favorite? Yeah. I should go away more often. You guys like me. Hey? Should I go away more often? Should I? No. Oh, it's good to be home. Back to work tomorrow. <laughs> 